All right, everybody, this is chapter one from Sylvia Mater's Human Biology 15th edition, Exploring Life in Science. Uh, this chapter does a lot of the exploration of science as a process, um, what it is, what it means, and how to do it. It also talks about um, life, the characteristics common to living things, and sort of how we can go about studying them in a scientific way. So here are the learning outcomes um, from chapter one, and I'm not going to uh, necessarily beat you to beat you over the head with these. Um, I just kind of want you to be able to see them, and we're going to explore each one in more detail. So the first is um, explain the basic characteristics common to living organisms. So let's go through and list those. Uh, living things are organized slash be, can be characterized according to different levels. Um, living things are able to maintain homeostasis. Living things respond to stimuli. Living things reproduce and develop. Living things adapt and evolve. And finally, living things require energy. And I'm going to go into each of these topics and uh, explore them a little bit more for each one, starting with living things require energy. So life requires materials and energy in, to be input into it. So this is kind of a physics-y definition, but energy is the capacity to do work. I'm sure you have probably a better, more intuitive definition of what energy means in your head. Um, and uh, humans are heterotrophs. And what that means is that we need to consume other organisms in order to sustain ourselves. We need energy output from the outside. We need raw material input. And uh, this input comes in the form of nutrients which are broken down in order to uh, provide building blocks so that we can build the kinds of uh, body systems and tissues that we're going to be exploring later on um, and give us energy in the form of generally ATP. Um, you think about metabolism, which we can think of as the sum total of chemical reactions that occur within your body um, and encompass anabolism and catabolism. Don't worry about those two words. I just kind of want you to have heard those in this class. Um, and the sun is the ultimate source of all energy. And what I mean by this is, um, I mean, but the organisms photosynthesize using energy from the sun. And then uh, we eat either animals that have eaten those plants or we eat those plants directly in order to get the energy from them. Okay. And plants use the process of photosynthesis to create sugars from the sun's energy. And so photosynthesis is the process of turning light energy into chemical energy that we get to use or we, we, we can use uh, to fuel our body systems. Um, the next category is that living things are organized, a slash can be characterized according to levels. Um, and sort of the first or more most fundamental thing in the universe really is an atom. It is the smallest unit of an element. We're going to get into this a bit more in chapter two. Um, atoms com uh, comprise molecules. So uh, more than one atom, more than one kind of atom put together makes a molecule. Molecules are then uh, put together to create cells, which is the structural and functional unit of all living things. Then cells make up tissues, uh, which is a, a tissue is a group of cells with a common function. Uh, tissues make up organs, which the definition of an organ is a group of tissues functioning together for a specific task. And then organ systems, which are several organs working together. And there's a nice picture of um, the digestive system, which has many organs in it. Um, to you know, do a specific thing. Then you have organisms, which um, you could consider like an individual. And this is one of my favorite butterflies here. This is a picture of Spearia diana, not relevant, but I thought you should know. <clears throat> Complex individuals contain organ systems, okay? And you, again, you probably have a better definition inside your brain for what an organism or an individual is than this sort of dry textbook one here. So these are things that all kind of happen on the individual level. Each of these exists within an individual, and hopefully you noticed 
that they are sort of organized from bottom to top. Atom, you know, makes up molecules. Molecules make up cells. Cells make up tissues. Tissues make up organs. Organs make up organ systems. Organ systems are contained within individuals. Okay, these are all individual level things. The next thing that happens is a group of the same species, a group of individuals in the same area, makes up a population. Okay, and you can see here how organism sort of feeds into this population. So then a community is a group of interacting uh, populations in an area. So I put this coral reef here. And an ecosystem is the community comprised of populations and the physical environment. Um, so ecosystems are um, made up of the community plus the physical environment itself. And then you have the biosphere, which is the zone of air, land, and water where uh, all organisms exist. And so hopefully you can see this sort of hierarchical organization uh, where each of these things sort of leads to the next one or is made up of the one before it.